Hello viewers, welcome back. I'm Easy B. This is Easy B Tactical. So I love my Strybog SP9A3A1. Strybog is a great pistol. Very affordable compared to another one of my favorite, the BNT GHM9. One of the things I love right away that I preferred on the Strybog versus to the BNT GHM9 was the selector switch the safety switch was so easy to use very easy to flip on and on every time i handle a ghm9 it was very hard and very painful not painful it takes a lot of force and strength to man to operate the safety switch i actually use two fingers but i solved the issue myself without buying anything and i wanted to show you how i did it so if you like today's content, give this a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share the video. Hopefully this helps somebody. Let's get into it. So right off the bat, I do want to specify that there's a cheap solution to this problem. You can go on to the HB Industries website. You can buy a reduced tension spring. That's about $5 or $4 actually. So it's cheap. You can buy the springs and replace them for the safety switch. However, I like to do things myself and I didn't want to wait really. My main thing is I didn't want to wait. So. I ended up doing the thing, the repair myself, and all I needed was a cutting pliers and some needle nose pliers. These are the two tools that I use beside a punch to release the lower block for the GHM9. So let me remove it and then we'll go from there. Let's see. Okay, I already did the repair because that's why I did this morning uh, earlier today. So going back to the repair. So I did find a video on YouTube on how to remove the safety switch so you use the, the needle pliers what you do is find a very sharp and thin object press in the button of your safety switch on the right side and then once you press it first of all sorry put it on fire mode and safe because you're gonna have to slide this towards the top and release it so you have to put it on fire press down the hole there's a tiny detent hole you press it and then it pushes a pin a retention pin down which is spring loaded which allows you to then release the button so put your finger on it because it's under tension as i mentioned so this comes up put it right here and then there's a little pin that fell right here this little pin here put it aside and then inside the hole, there's a tiny spring. Don't lose it. If I can grab it. And of course I pop it, almost lost it. So there's a tiny spring right here, which retains the switch. Once you do that, you press. The first time it was pretty hard and this is only the second time I take it apart. So you press and you start twisting turning the safety switch. Once you turn it, you just have to wiggle it and gently slide it out. Gently slide it out. Be careful because the retention pins are also in the spring loaded, are spring loaded inside the, the lower. So I usually keep my finger there because the first time I did this, things just went flying. 
as I remove the safety switch. So let me take the focus. Here's the safety switch removed here. Maybe hard to see, but right in there are the two retention pins that are retaining, that are activating, putting pressure on your safety switch. There's one on the left, one on the right. You have to be very careful in what you do. Assuming they didn't pop out spring loaded, you can just tilt your piece lower, shake it, and put your hand there, and then they will fall off. So one side fell off, and this is what it looks like. There's a plastic cap, the actual pin, and then there's a spring inside of it. So this spring is what I cut. All I did is I took the spring, I took my pliers, and I cut two loops, so two coils. Let's, assuming a coil is one circle, I took out two coils from this, from each of the spring, and you can see right here what I what I removed. Right here, I put it back. I tried it, cut it off. But once you cut the spring, then you put the spring back into the cap and this is one of the challenging part is just take the spring put it in there one side of the spring has a little bit of a glue on it that's the one that goes inside if you notice but if you don't remember it it doesn't really matter and then i put the assembly back into the hole this was the hard part as well so if you have skinny fingers the better if not I had to play with it and use my pliers and this is exactly what would happen it keeps falling in there so I'm gonna keep the other one secure because I don't want both of them so I shake it in there and then just gently take it and try to place it somewhere the hole or use your pliers but with the grease and oil I just slide it in there so the spring is inside the cap, I call it the cap, the little plastic retention. And then I gently place it in the hole. Are uh, the two retention things. If you see those two bars that are horizontal, there's one and there's another one. Those are the retention pin we are talking about right there. Right there. One to the left and one to the right. And when you put them back, make sure they're lining up like this, horizontal or parallel to these bars on top here. That's the best way I can describe it. Oops. Parallel to this. Because if you notice the safety switch, the alignment, there, so basically those tabs are engaging to those holes right there. So they have to be parallel and not perpendicular. So that's all I did. I cut it on each side and then I'm going to reassemble the switch. Okay, now to reassemble the switch, we're going to start from the left side because only the right side comes off. And what I did is gently insert the switch, rotate it. You may have to push down with your finger on the retention tab, but as you rotate, you get into it. You rotate it and slide it, slide it totally, then push down a little bit, and then insert it and rotate it. And when you done, you're done correctly, you should see and feel the tension already before you even put the right side. So it's sitting properly on the tab. The way I can tell is because it can't go any further up, and it doesn't go down too much. So you should still feel the clicking and retention. You should hear the click and feel the retention. And now I'll take the spring, place it in the hole. So I put the spring here. I'll take the tab and put it back inside. I mean the pin, the locking pin, sorry. Now the key thing is make sure the switch is on fire again, fire position again, down. And we're not 
I push the locking pin, I put my finger on it, I bring the safety switch and I slide it as I maintain the pin down because again it's under pressure tension and then it pops in, it's good to go. And that's, that is how I fix my safety switch. Again, you can buy a part and replace the spring with the new spring, but I want something immediate as we can, you know, instant gratification is one of our problem today. But, uh, and I also felt good in, in, in figuring out the solution myself, which is just any spring, the shorter they are, the less tension, removing the number of cords. So, that works for me and I'm super glad now to switch. So I hope this helps and that saves you some time. Money, maybe 10 bucks without shipping, but hopefully you learn the new skills and just a way to improve the farm to make it more tailored to the needs, which was my goal. Um, those are expensive still, but I do want them to be kind of really what I need to and the work the way I want them to work. And, Safety switch is one thing that I found a great deal of because we use it all the time. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook. And um, yeah, thank you. Hopefully you enjoy it.